Hello everyone and welcome back to WOCR 89-101. We have a special homecoming presentation today as the Olivet College Comets face off against the Trine University Thunder. Should be a good one today. Both of them have won their only conference game so far. Trine averaging about 30 points a game while the Comets themselves averaging about 45. So it could be an offensive output here today. It could be immense. About 75 minutes until game time, hopefully we're getting things set to roll here at Cutler Events Center as both teams are warming up there. Out on the field, the Comets look like they're set to roll here. And uh, hopefully a good one tonight. Do you want me to keep going? As a uh, Comets beat Alma four or 33 to 10, I think, in their first conference game of the season. They're averaging only 215 yards a game and 40 yards rushing on the ground, which is very impressive. That defensive front has been very impressive thus far this season as the Comets look to keep their defensive stall worth going. And they're trying to break in a, a freshman quarterback, Evan Ormsby, and this will be his first real test, to get, test today against the Thunder as they've been blowing out teams left and right. Um, <laughs> as they've got a three-headed monster in the backfield and Cortavion Bennett, or Barnett, excuse me, Jeremiah Sterling, and then Newt Crowell, as well as a couple guys on the edge that have some big play ability in Akeem Benjamin and Deontay Higgins, as well as a red zone threat in Nick Pagano. He has one touchdown on a fade route earlier this season that we called. While the leaders on the defensive side of the ball are Tamar Hart. He has 16 tackles, four and a half sacks, and five and a half tackles for loss. Uh, David Curl has three sacks and six tackles for loss and 15 tackles, while Jalen Rogers in one last game of play has been impressive as well with 11 tackles, three tackles for loss. As the linebacking core for the Comets has also been really solid today with Colby Williams, Alonzo Grigsby, and Andrew Campbell all over 13 tackles, 15, 14, 13 respectively, and Alonzo Grigsby has four sacks.
Hello everyone and welcome to WOCR 89 one the one here with Michael Fisk on play-by-play -play for the upcoming game and Parker Brown first broadcast of this season on color should be a good one today Parker as it is homecoming for the Comets today against the Tryon Thunder just to kind of recap the homecoming events that have happened this week today actual homecoming not only do we have the football game here today uh, the men's soccer team plays Tryon at 7 p.m. The women's soccer team should be finishing up against Adrian right about now, as well as the women's golf team should be finishing up here soon uh, for their fall, uh, MIAA fall final. And uh, just to recap on the previous uh, festivities, sports that have happened during this homecoming week, I'll, or the volleyball team has had two separate games, which they lost, both of them, in three sets to Albion and they in four sets to Trine. The men's soccer team beat Alma in double overtime, 2-1, to one, with a goal by Josh Rosendale, and the women's soccer team took a loss there to Albion, 6-1, to one, as we get set for some double MIAA action. Just a recap of the MIAA standings as we speak right now. I know it's very early as there's three, uh, there's a three-team tie currently at the top. Olivet is 1-0, Hope is 1-0, Trine is 1-0. Albion has yet to play the game in the MIAA, and today will be the first game for them. And then Alma, Adrian, and Kalamazoo are all 0-1 so far, as Olivet was able to beat Alma 33-10 in their previous game. And as we get set for this game here today, it's going to be a battle of strength today, Parker, as both teams rely heavily on their defense, as Olivet is only allowing 16 points a game and Trine is only allowing 21 points. As Olivet, their strength is their front seven, specifically their defensive line, as they're only giving up 40 rush yards a game, Parker. That is ridiculous. That is insane, especially with Tamar. Tamar Hart is the, really the culprit of that with the Comets. Um, that's basically how they're stopping the def or their offenses against every game. I mean, helping helping everybody out is what they're doing. And they are going to rely heavily on that defensive front today to try to stop the rushing attack of the Trine Thunder as Zane Kirby has 429 yards on the season and he's aver averaging about 107 yards a game. So he's a very solid running back there for the Thunder. But the offense for the Thunder is very balanced. 176 rushing yards a game and 179 passing yards. And if they're going to want to beat the Comets today, they're going to have to rely heavily on that pass game. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, especially with, I mean, on the other side of the ball, we got the Comets with a very run-heavy team. I mean, the, so far this year, they're averaging about 249 rush yards and only 150 passing yards. Uh, through, throughout four games. So we'll ex probably expect a little bit more of the, ru a little more rushing. Hopefully we'll see a little bit of passing. I mean, clearly we don't pass as much, but with the Trine Thunder, you uh, you can see that they are not, you, you can. They're very balanced. Yeah, absolutely. And as Olivet on only 300, uh, about 400 yards of offense is averaging about 44 points a game, which is very impressive. But today is gonna be a true test against the Thunder as in the series rivalry here, all-time series. 7-11 yep. against the Trine Thunder since they've been playing in the MIAA. And the last W for the Comets came in October 19th of 2019, excuse me, guys. And then the, with the shortened season last year happening in the spring, Olivet lost to Trine 36-21 to in a home game. And so in the something as... In the last three games, Olivet is 1-2. In 2018, I got a chance to call that game with Lamar Carswell and company from Trine and Lane Porter and company for the Comets. It was a really tight game. Olivet ended up losing 49-50, and they lost. Be they would have sent it to overtime with an extra point. But as both teams are on a high-scoring offense, they're both teams are struggling to stop each other and it, it would have gone on forever. The Olivet elected to go for two at Olivet, and it's weird to think about that now that I'm a senior, but that was one of the most fun games I've watched, and hopefully we'll see another one of those today, Parker. Oh, absolutely. Hopefully we see a, a win, especially if for being homecoming. I mean, what a way to celebrate homecoming week with a dub. Yes, that, that would be a, a great way to cap it off, wouldn't it? 
as Olivet has got a three-headed monster in the backfield that they were going to rely heavily on. And Cortavion Barnett, Jeremiah Sterling, and Nias New, Nuke Crowell, as both of them, or all three of them are about at 200 yards or more on the season, as Jeremiah Sterling is more of the feature back with 53, yush, 53 rushes on the season, which is 20 more than either running back other than him. However, Cortavion Barnett has used his carries very wisely and done very well as he has the most yards out of any of the three and five touchdowns, averaging about 82 yards a game and 12 yards a carry. Like you said, uh, Jeremiah Sterling also has five touchdowns with about a full two, uh, excuse me, 300 and about two yards. So this year, uh, we, we, or this game specifically, we should see a little bit more out of him. As Jeremiah Sterling is more of that power back, he's a, he's a big guy, but he, he, he does know how to run it downhill, that's for sure. And he, as Parker said, he knows how to put it in the end zone. 302 yards on the season, 5.7 yards a carry, which five yards a carry, almost six yards a carry is still very good. And uh, with five touchdowns on the season, we'll see probably a lot of him today as they try to establish the run game, does the Comets. I can see with the Comets today, they're probably going to use that run game to kind of chew away the clock and basically just make it so, like you said, Jeremiah is about doing five yards a carry. So we can see those five yards dwindled on the clock, basically just give try no time to succeed here today as Evan Ormsby, a freshman quarterback here for the Comets, and I think that's another reason why they rely heavily on the run game, just to try to settle him in, make him very comfortable. He's completing 55% of his passes, has about 500 yards passing on the season, averaging about 125 yards a game. He has six interceptions, but also six touchdowns, as he did have three interceptions against Alma, and with that, we're gonna send it back down to the studio as we get set for the national anthem, and then we will be back here for game time. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Cutler Event Center here for this MIAA conference matchup between the Tri and Thunder and the Olivet College Comets. Should be a good one today as we stated a couple minutes ago, but with that, kind of get back to the comments here on offense, trying to get Evan Ormsby settled in, the freshman quarterback with that three-headed monster in the backfield. But he also has some guys on the outside that can absolutely make some plays as we've seen Akeem Benjamin, mainly in the special teams on the previous game, score 
and, and uh, make his presence known on the special teams. But he is quite the receiver on the outside as well, 11 receptions for 155 yards and one touchdown, as well as Deontay Higgins, uh, a big play threat in his own right, averaging 125 yards, gain, uh, yards or averaging 41 yards a game, but 125 yards on the season. Both of them are speedsters, like to get on the outside, get the ball on the outside, and make something happen for the Comets. Yeah, absolutely. We That's one thing I brought up. We, I'd like to see a little bit more from that pass game from the Comets. Like, as I said earlier, only 150 yards with uh, 200, well, worth passing yards and about 240 rushing yards per game. So let's see that passing game get a little bit bumped up. Uh, Ornsby's got a little bit of an arm on him, so I, I want to see him kind of use his skills to, to his advantage for the Comets today. As we might see the Comets open it up a little bit on the offensive. Not only is it homecoming, but also Trine's defense is very good as well. But talking about the Olivet College defense once again, uh, they're led by their defensive front, but that allows their linebackers in Colby Williams, Alonzo Grigsby, and Andrew Campbell to kind of roam free and do as they will. All of them have over 13 tackles, 15, 14, and 13 respectively, as well as Alonzo Grigsby has four sacks and six and a half, or six tackles for loss and an interception. So a lot of freedom is created for the linebackers of the Comets simply by the strength that they have on that defensive front. Oh, absolutely. I mean, if anybody, if any part of the team is like their their feature, I would say it's their defense. Oh, absolutely. And with Tamar, with everybody else, I mean, we they, they're just dominant on that side of the ball. I mean, we've seen picks, we've seen multiple sacks, especially a couple of weeks ago, their last home game. So I I expect it to be a very defensive heavy game rather than offense. But something's got to give, Parker, as both teams are averaging over 30 points a game. So if, if this game is going as, as anticipated, where we think it's going to be a great defensive matchup between both teams, I don't think either team's going to get to 30 points today. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, or it'll be tough. I shouldn't yeah. say I don't think. It's going to be tough to do so. Absolutely. I think it's going to... I would say maybe a little bit of a lower scoring game than we have seen with the Comets and the Trine Thunder. I I see, I can I would see the defense kind of stopping both sides of the ball a lot today, especially with Tamar, especially with the Trine Thunder as well. Uh, I can see a very low scoring game. As Olivet is receiving the initial kickoff as things get set here, as the coin toss was just decided, Olivet's going to receive the ball and Trine's going to be kicking off to them. That means we will get to see the Comet offense to, to start here. Evan Ormsby and company try to lead the charge and, uh, and put some points up on the board for the first time today. But as, both, as Trine has taken the field and Olivet's signature entrance coming out of the Comet helmet, we are going to witness that here before we get set. But anything you want to add, Parker? Um, I... I'm just excited, man. You know, as a student of Olivet, I mean, hey, it's homecoming. Let's enjoy it. And one la final thing I'll add about the Trine defense is they have played an extra game, but the linebackers for Trine, two of them have over 40 tackles in five games, which is significantly more than Olivet. But Olivet has not really played in a very tight game thus far, so a lot of people are getting playing time. And Trine has lost twice on the season. 1-0 in the conference, which is really all that matters as far as that goes. But it, it just goes to show you that this, this Trine defense is no slouch either. I mean, with the standings right now, we got, it's, it's a close call. We got eight, uh, eight Albion in the top. We got predictions of Comets being in third and Trine being in second. So, as I mean... This is, these are some of the two best teams in our conference in the sport of football. This is gonna be a beautiful game, beautiful beautiful defense, beautiful offense, and good special teams all around for both sides can wager how this game goes. As I think, as I'm gonna sound super cliche here, but I think mistakes, whichever team makes more mistakes is going to uh, not win this game, I guess is the best way to put it. I think the team that makes the least amount of mistakes will come out with the W here as the Comets are getting pumped up here on the sideline as we get set for Comet football on WOCR 89-1-1. One, one. 
as it should be a good one as Deontay Higgins as well as Akeem Benjamin, the two receivers I was talking about, threats on the special teams, are going to be back to return for the Comets. Fisk, I absolutely agree with you about how one mistake can change this game. Either the Trine Thunders quarterback James Gibbon or Evan Ormsby could make one mistake, one pick, get sacked one time, and that's the game. As Alex, as Alex Price is playing quarterback for the Trine Thunder today, but we will get to see the comments first as Evan Ormsby, Jeremiah Sterling and company are going to be coming onto the field first as Ryan Hibbets kicks off and it's gonna go into the end zone and the Comets will start their first drive today on offense. Good start there by the Trine Thunder getting it to where they wanted to be. Got a little over kick by them. They kinda, I'm assuming they wanted to start a little bit farther down instead of the 25 yard line, but good start for the uh, the Trine Thunder, excuse me. As that's probably better field position than trying to kick to Akeem Benjamin as we saw what he can do on special teams in the previous home game. Absolutely. He, he is an absolute speed demon when it comes to special teams, in my opinion. As we get set here, as Cortavion Barnett will be the back to start this one. Uh, Evan Ormsby, he's in the shotgun. Olivet likes to run out of that pistol formation where the tailback is directly behind the quarterback. Ev's been, Evan Ormsby's in the shotgun. He has two receivers to his right. I'd expect a run, especially on first and 10 in the beginning of the game here. Trying to establish the run game is the Comets here. And that's exactly what they're gonna do as Barnett's up to right and he's got it up the middle and he's gonna get it up to about big midfield and that's a huge first play for the Comets. Get it up to about midfield, that's a great way to start. Absolutely, what a great way to start for the Olive Comets. The, uh, the, excuse me, the offensive line did absolutely did their job right there, opening up for the running back right there. As that is exactly how you want to start if you're the Comets. Gets up to about midfield. Ormsby uh, setting the play call here for his offensive line. He's in the shotgun. He has two receivers to his left, one to his right, and Barnett is still the back. As there, that is a bad snap as... Ormsby's gonna just throw it away, and that was actually a great play there by Ormsby after the mishandle on the snap, just to be able to throw it away and live to see another day. Second down and 10 here for the Comets. Yeah, Evan Ormsby did a great job trying to get that ball away just so he wouldn't lose yardage, especially with the 25 yards they just gained there. As Ormsby getting the play call from the sideline, he's in the shotgun once again. He has two receivers to his left, one to his right. Surveying the field. Or Ormsby's gonna take the snap here. And he's gonna hand it off up the middle to Barnett. Barnett is stuffed, but after about a four yard gain, gonna make it third and six here for the Comets. Barnett on the carry. Number 22, Keyshawn Amos. Like, like we said earlier, Comets are gonna come out, establish that run game, especially that being their like main focus on offense. So. They're doing exactly what they need to do to get down the field. As we are going to get set here for this third down, Ormsby in the shotgun. Now Barnett is to his left on this play, and he has two receivers to his left and one to his right. Surveying the field, Ormsby is going to step up in the pocket, and he's going to throw across his body, and that was almost picked off there by Tyler Pollard. As the Comets, after that huge first play there, will be punting here inside Trine territory. Is Brendan Sines going to be punting here for the Comets? It seemed to be the, the offensive line kind of crumbled there. Brought in a lot of pressure for Ornsby. Looks like they're going to go punt it off, as you said. As Sine will be punting for the Comets, and Aaron Dean will be back deep for the Thunder. Set to kick, a good snap there and a good punt there from Sign. It's gonna take a roll and that's gonna be close and unable to get to it, it's gonna go in and that's gonna be a touchback with 13.29 left to go here in the first quarter, still 0-0. And we are going to see the try and thunder for the first time today on offense. Alex Price leading his troops onto the field for the first time. And they're gonna start at the 25. The 20, excuse me. 
as Price is going, looks like he is the lone man in the shotgun right now. He has two receivers to his right, one to his left, or two to his left. As we get set to roll here, 13-29 left to go in the first quarter. He's gonna bring a man in motion, that's Zane Kirby. Now he is no longer the only one in the back and they're gonna play action pass, a post route up the middle. And as we alluded to before the game, the way to attack this Olivet College defense is in the pass game, as that is a nice pitch and catch there from Alex Price to Brandon Klein. And that's a first down. Both teams started out the game with huge first plays, respectively, for the Comets as well as the Thunder. Hopefully this is not a, a concurrent thing with the Comets right now with their uh, passing defense, getting them down the field. The trying is actually, like you said, finding what they need to do early on in this game. As Price is gonna keep it himself, he's gonna go up the middle, he's gonna try to get it out on the edge, and he's going to get the edge. Before a short gain, it's gonna be about second and six here for the Thunder. And with that, dual Alex Price showing the dual threat ability as he got about a five yard gain, second and five on the 48 is where Trine will continue this drive. Price in the shotgun, he has two receivers to his right, two to his left, and Kirby in the backfield. Surveying the field is Kirby, or excuse me, is Price. Price gonna take the snap, he surveys the field, he's gonna try to throw the slant route, and that's gonna be incomplete. The intended receiver, unable to, con un unable to come up with it, and it's gonna be third and five there for the Thunder. as the intended receiver was Kale Lawson. And third and five, Price in the shotgun, he has trips to his left and one receiver to his right. Serving the field is Price. Price is gonna take the snap, play action pass, he's gonna try to throw it and that is way out of reach there for his intended receiver. And they are gonna be forced to punt here as the intended receiver was Connor Arthur. A lot of pressure there by given from the Comets to, excuse me, Price Price, in, in that during that play. So it looks like there was that pressure really got to him in that throw, didn't really read the play, the, the receiver right overthrew it. As it looks like the receiver, uh, Arthur, had a step on him, but just unable to convert the pass. And Akeem Benjamin back deep here for the Comets and Br Brayton Raider punting for the Thunder. Benjamin's gonna call a fair catch at about the 12 yard line and that is where the Comets will have their second drive of the day. As after that huge first gain there from Cortavion Barnett, they kinda shut down, uh, the Trine Thunder kinda shut them down after that, forcing a punt there from Brendan Sign. As the Com Comets look to continue to get rolling here in this first conference game, 12.35 left to go here in the first quarter, still 0-0. And the first two possessions, as we thought, have been good defensive stops from both teams. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, right now is where we need to fire up that offense on both sides, especially. Uh, we, we need to get some points on the board with now 12 minutes and 35 seconds left on the clock in the first quarter. As Ormsby's in the shotgun, he has two receivers to his left, one to his right. And Cortavion Barnett, he's gonna make one jump cut and he's gonna get about th two there Number for the Comets. Second and seven for the Comets after that short game from Barnett. As the Comets getting the play call from the sideline, Ormsby communicating the play here to his fellow teammates. He's in the shotgun. Barnett is still the feature back so far. We have yet to see Sterling or Crowell, but he, as Ormsby has two receivers to his left, one to his right. A play action pass, and he's gonna get it out to Benjamin, and Benjamin's gonna get the first down. That's gonna keep the chains rolling for the Comets. Absolutely, good play there by Ornsby. They're throwing it right where it needed to be, putting it right in the chest, as, as you other people would say. As Ormsby once again getting the play call from the sideline. He's in the shotgun. He has two receivers to his right, one to his left. Surveying the field is Ormsby. Ormsby's gonna bring Seth Young in motion. 
As he's going to hand it off to Barnett. Barnett's going to get a little bit of space, but another short gain. As after that one huge play to start the game, the Thunder have done a great job early, early in this game of kind of containing Barnett to just a couple yards at a time. It's going to be second and seven here for the Comets. Once again, play call from the sideline. Wouldn't be surprised here if they start thinking about putting another back in, getting, getting him some rest, putting Jeremiah Sterling out there to get some rushing yards. As they must see, they must see a matchup that they like having Barnett in to start this game. It's Ormsby play action pass. He's going to get it out to Seth Young. Seth Young is going to lower his shoulder, and he's going to get about another six yards. going to make it third and, a, a third and about a long one. And then it's going to 10.45 left to go here. As Seth Young is down on the field. And with that, we're going to take a quick 30-second break here on WOCR 89-1-1. One one. Don't go anywhere for Comet football. Hello everyone and welcome back as Seth Young is jogging off the field so that is good to see and with that it's going to be third and about two here for the Comets. 10.45 left to go here in the first quarter as the Comets are coming back out onto the field now. In the shotgun is Ormsby. Behind him is Barnett, and he has two receivers to his right. Comet's looking to make a play here. Ormsby surveying the field. He's going to take the snap, and he's going to hand it off to Barnett up the middle, and it's going to be close, but it looks like they're going to mark him just shy of the first down. And now there is a penalty flag on the play. Looks like some extracurriculars after the whistle. as I'm not sure who that's going to be against awaiting the call here from the referees down on the field. Looks like both teams are getting a little chirpy now as, as they would say in hockey, getting a little chirps out here and there, but looks like it got one of, it's the best of one of them. That's Tayshawn Morris was in on that, but it looks like it might be going against the Thunder as it's going to be against both teams, actually. So the penalty's offset. And then also the down will be replayed. According to the referees. As it's going to be third and one here. Fourth down. They corrected themselves, I apologize. Sorry, that it's weird. We can hear the refs now. We have a new sound system up here, but they are very confused themselves, and it, they are going to mark it as fourth down officially now, fourth and one here for the Comets, and they are going to punt it away as Brendan Sign comes on for the second time today. I was about to say, if they were going to give that third down to them, that would have been a huge advantage for the Comets to get that first down and run down the field. Absolutely, and you could hear Trine wasn't very happy with that and it is fourth and one here for the Comets. Punt returning is Aaron Dean for the Thunder and Brennan Sign to punt for the Comets. Good snap and a good punt there from Sign, a deep punt as Dean is gonna take the fair catch at about the 31 yard line and that is where Price and company will begin their second drive of the day here with 9.58 left to go here in the first quarter. as we get set 
for the second drive for the Thunder today as both teams have really struggled to get something going on offense, Parker. Yeah, absolutely. It looks like, like I said earlier, it's going to be a huge defensive game on both sides of the ball. As Price has a two-back set here, and he has one receiver to his right and one to his left. Going to bring Vargo in motion, Seth Vargo. Going to take the snap. He's going to hand it off to Kirby on the right side, and Kirby's going to get about three. Going to make his second and three or four. Going to make his second and six here for the Comets. Or excuse me, for the Thunder. 9.44 left to go here in the first quarter. Going to be second and seven here for the Thunder. Price in the shotgun. He has two receivers to his right, one to his left. And Kirby is in the backfield. Surveying the field is Price. Price going to take the snap. He's going to hand it off to Kirby on a draw play, and he's going to be just shy of the first down, going to make it third and one here for the Thunder. It looks like both sides of the ball right now. Er, I mean, it's still early in the game. Hey, they're both establishing that run game, which is really what they want to do right now, especially right now with trying to be in third and, third and two. A third and short here for the Thunder. Price in the shotgun, two receivers to his left, one to his right. As Kirby's in the backfield. He's going to hand it off to Kirby on another draw play, and he's going to be stuck up the middle from Jalen Rogers. And that, if you're the Comets, that's the play you wanted to make right there. And it's going to be fourth down here for the Thunder inside their own territory. It's going to be fourth and about two. And fun, the Thunder will bring out their punt team now as well. As it's been a real back and forth game, especially this is going to be a field position game for sure as both teams continue to punt back and forth to each other. 8.08 left to go here in the first quarter. Still 0-0. Zero, zero. As there is a whistle awaiting the call here. Penalty marker on the play. Delay a game against the Thunder. That's going to push them back a little bit more. And they are going to repeat fourth down, but that's going to be a five-yard penalty. And that might give Akeem Benjamin some more room to work here on the punt return. As Benjamin's back deep, and Brayton Raider is punting here for the Thunder. It's actually Braden Moore. And that is going to take a Comet bounce back to about the 39-yard line. And that is where the Comets will begin their next drive here with 7.35 left to go here in the first quarter. As it has been a defensive stall, stall worth so far. As it's been quite a game so far. Not a whole, not, neither team has really gave an inch thus far. Starting at the 38-yard line is the Comets on this drive. Ormsby is going to bring his teammates out onto the field, looking to try to put a drive together. 7.35 left to go here in the first quarter. As Ormsby's in the shotgun, he has three receivers to his left, one to his right. Barnett in the backfield. Surveying the field is Ormsby. Ormsby's going to take the snap, play action pass. He's going to try to throw it out to the outside, and it's going to be broken up on the outside there by the Thunder, by Aaron Dean. He's going to make the play. Jakari Break Hamilton. Break that one up. Jakari Hamilton almost with that catch. Speed about Jakari Hamilton. Graduated with that guy. As Jakari Hamilton on the catch it, but it looked like Ormsby had a post route up the middle, and he just missed him. As Ormsby's in the shotgun. He has two receivers to his left, one to his right. Barnett in the backfield. As Ormsby is going to get the play off just in time, and he's going to get it up the middle there to Deontay Higgins for a short slant route, and it's going to make it second, third, and five, excuse me. 
Third and five, what do you think in the comments do here, Parker? I'd, I'd say they probably go for a rush. I mean, it's five yards. They got... Uh, Maybe a draw play? Probably a draw play by the quarterback, but, but they got two, two receivers on uh, Ornsby's left and one on the right, so I could, could see a pass play just to get that little bit extra yardage with the air. As it is third and five here. Ornsby's going to get it out to Seth Young. Seth Young's going to get the first down, it looks like. Yes, he is going to get the first down, and that's going to keep the chains rolling here for the Comets at midfield. Beautiful, again, like you said, beautiful play there by the Comets. Did exactly what they needed to do, just move those chains, get them in the extra time they needed on offense to possibly score. As at midfield is the Comets. Ormsby has thrown the ball relatively well so far in his few pass attempts that he's had. In the shotgun is Ormsby. Barnett is the back. He has two receivers to his left, one to his right. He's going to give it up to Barnett up the middle, and Barnett doesn't have a whole lot going as he is make, able to make a few extra yards after contact and going to make it about second and six. As Comets inside trying territory for the second time today. Ormsby surveying the field. He's in the shotgun as Barnett is the back. His two receivers to his left, one to his right. Going to hand it up the middle again. And excuse me, that is Crowell. That is Crowell's first carry of the game so far. And that is going to be third and about three here for the Comets. This is a manageable down and distance, third and three. They can really do anything right here. Draw a pass. What are you thinking here, Parker? Comets could Comets are really establishing that run game like they've we've seen all game. So I with their position, with how they're set up right now, I can see a run play going just to get those extra yardage. Uh, Nuke is pretty good with getting that extra yardage, getting that getting them to move the chains, getting them downfield, so I can see a play. Oh. Third and three, Crowell's going to pick it up off the bounce. That was a great play there from Crowell. A mishandled snap there from Ormsby falls on the ground. Crowell able to pick it up and get the first down. That was a fortunate play there for the Comets. Fortunate bounce. As it is first and ten now, able to get the first down is Crowell. Ormsby. He's got two receivers to his left, one to his right. He's in the shotgun. Crowell is the back. Surveying the field. Ormsby's going to take it. He's going to give it to Crowell. Crowell is going to try to go up the middle, and he gets maybe one yard. I don't think they're going to give him the one yard. Going to make it second and ten here for the Comets with four minute, just over four minutes left to go here in the first quarter. Comets, like we said, are just doing the right things at the right time. Comets, like we said, Comets are just moving down the field, moving them chains, second and 10. As 3.51 left to go here in the first quarter. Surveying the field. Ormsby's going to throw it deep to Benjamin. He took a shot as he threw it. Incomplete there. It's third and 10. As Ormsby really took a shot there, that looked like uh, quite the hit taken there from the freshman as he's stuck in there to try to make a play on the outside. It's going to be third and ten. We'll probably see another pass play like that, but not as deep of one here on third and ten for the Comets. As Ormsby's in the shotgun, two receivers to his left, one to his right. He's going to bring Broussard in motion. Broussard's going to motion back out to the right. Ormsby surveying the field. He's going to try to get it up the middle to, to Seth Young, and that is going to be picked off, headed back the other way is the Thunder. And that was intercepted there by the Thunder. As Angel Sanchez makes the play there, deep in center field at safety. Able to make the play, and that is going to be a first down for the Thunder inside 
Comet territory. 328 left to go here in the first quarter. Fantastic play there by the Trine Thunder defense. Like you said, Fisk, with that pick, it, it, that might have just changed the momentum of the game. Like we talked earlier, mistakes will be the uh, deterrent of who wins the game. As Price is in the shotgun and is through to his right, he's going to hand it off up to Kirby up the middle. Kirby's going to get a good gain, about five yards, five, six yards, going to make it a second and four. 3.15 left to go here in the first quarter. And Kirby on the carry. Number 95, Ricky Williamson on the tackle. Along with as Price in the shotgun, he has two receivers to his right, one to his left. Kirby once again in the backfield. Surveying the field is Price. Price going to play action pass. He's going to get it out to the outside. And they are going to get a first down is the Thunder. Good pitch and catch there from Price to Adam Gutting, the tight end. 2.40 left to go here in the first quarter. As we get set, Alex Price. He has two receivers to his left, two to his right. Price surveying the field now. He's got Kirby in the backfield. He's going to hand it off up to Kirby up the middle. And uh, Kirby breaks one, and he's going to get about 12 yards there. That's going to be another first down there for the Thunder. 2.06 left to go here in the first quarter. Looks Kirby like Trine is just finding that little, little speck in the defense right now to get them to be able to force their runs and get those huge gains of yard. So they're trying to open up the Comet defense here. It's Price in the shotgun, Kirby in the backfield. He has two receivers to his left, one to his right. He's gonna motion gutting over to the right now. Surveying the field now, it's back to pass. He's gonna get it across the middle as they do get to the outside. A nice catch there from Klein. Klein's been the feature target here so far for Price. With a minute 35 left to go here in the first quarter. And it looks like Klein is down on the field. So with that, we're going to take a quick one-minute break here on WOCR 89-1-1. to -1. Don't go anywhere for Comet Football. as we welcome you back to the Cutler Event Center here in Olivet, Michigan for this homecoming matchup between the Trine Thunder and the Olivet College Comets. As it is still 0-0, Trine is driving here with 1.30 left to go here in the first quarter. Price in the shotgun. He's going to bring gutting in motion. He has two receivers to his right, one to his left. Surveying the field. He's going to play action pass. He's going to try to get it up the middle. And Ooh, that, that so close to Close fist. to an interception, but there is some laundry on the field there. Looked like it might be going against the Comets as there was a little bit too much contact in the secondary trying to guard Kyron Pearson. As awaiting the call here on the field. 119 left now. And it is going to go against the Comets on Isaiah Moon, the senior corner. 
And with that, that'll keep the drive rolling here for the Thunder. 119 left to go here in the first quarter. Price getting the play call from the sideline. He has two receivers to his left, one to his right, and Kirby is the back. We've seen a lot of running out of this first down set here from the Thunder. What are you thinking, Parker? I, I can see another run play, especially with Zane Kirby in his game right now. And they are going to switch it up a little bit. It's going to be up the middle, and it's going to be kept there from Price. And Price is going to get a good gain, about eight yards there, going to be second and two. I lost the ball there. That was a good play. If, I, you, if you can lose the ball, you make the announcers lose good the ball, fake. that is a good fake. As it did look, look like they were going to run the reverse there, and Price ended up keeping it on quarterback keeper, second and two here for the Thunder. 52 seconds left in the first quarter, and the Thunder are driving. Price in the shotgun. He has two receivers to his right, one to, or two to his left as well. As it's going to get it up to Kirby, up the middle. Kirby taking a couple comments with him, and that's going to be a first down inside the 10-yard line at about the 9. As the clock continues to tick, 25 seconds now here in the first quarter. Kirby on the carry. Trying to make something happen here is Thunder. Price in the shotgun. He has one receiver to his left, one to his right, and he has two backs in the backfield. Kirby as well as Dominic Crowder. And now there is going to be a timeout taken, it looks like. Oh no, that is going to be the end of the first quarter as the clock continued to tick. So as we head to the second quarter here, I'm going to send it back down to the studio for a quick 30-second break here on WOCR 89 won the one Don't go anywhere for Comet Football. And welcome back to the Cutler Event Center here in Olivet, Michigan for this homecoming game between the Trine Thunder and the Olivet College Comets as it has been a good one so far. Still 0-0, but the Trine Thunder are driving deep inside Olivet territory here at about the 8-yard line. And with that... Price and company look to can punch this one in from the nine. First and, ten, or first and eight, I guess, is the best way to describe that. 15 minutes left to go here in the second quarter, awaiting the clock to start on this cadence here from Price. Price is going to take it. He's going to play action pass, surveying, and he's going to get it into the end zone. That's going to be a touchdown. Thunder makes it 6-0. To start this one, still very early, just nine seconds in to the second quarter, awaiting the extra point, 6-0, Thunder. Hey, first score of the game. Comets just need to do something to get them down the field like the Trine Thunder did. I can see, I bet they, when they were during in that huddle during the injury, they made a game plan on offense to As get themselves down that field. Touchdown pass from Price to Vargo. As the extra point is up and the extra point is good, makes it 7-0. And, sure and with that, we're going to see the Comets once again after this kick return. But if they're the Comets, the Comets have had a couple of decent successful drives getting down the field. They just haven't been able to convert on a couple of third downs that were critical and they are real drive stoppers even inside their own territory. So what, what can we see from the Comets here moving forward on offense? It looked like what I saw is that that pass game was really working for him until the interception. So if we can, if we can either just short short runs, 
get a few few yards every few uh, every play, and every maybe third and five, third and six, throw the ball, throw it a little, throw it a little mid range, get them to get down the field so the Comets can get their score up to tie the game real quick here. As Deontay Higgins and Akeem Benjamin are back deep. And Ryan Hibbets is going to be kicking for the Thunder as the Comets look to make something happen. Awaiting the kickoff here. As Benjamin and Higgins back deep to return. Hibbets kickoff, it's gonna be a short kick and it looks like it's going to be fielded there from Higgins or no, that's Benjamin. Benjamin makes a play up the middle, and that is a good return from Benjamin. Gets up to about the 36, and that is where the Comets will start this drive. That was an explosive play there from Akeem Benjamin. Number 38. As it looked like Akeem Benjamin almost took that one to the house. Shoestring tackle up the middle, stop Benjamin. First down and 10, Comets. As 14.30 left to go here in the second quarter. Both teams with all three timeouts left. Ball at about the 38 yard line after that good return from Akeem Benjamin. Ormsby and company trying to get something rolling on offense. As well, there, it looks like there's some confusion down on the field with the referees awaiting as they're going to add some more time onto the clock. 14.48, they're going to add 18 seconds onto the clock after that return from Benjamin. As Ormsby is going to try to lead his troops down the field here to put a score up on the board for the Comets. As Ormsby's in the shotgun, he has two receivers to his right. It looks like Crowell is in the backfield for this the start of this drive. Nuke's gonna take it and he's gonna spin back to the middle and he's gonna get upended at about the 41 yard line. Gonna make it second and seven here for the Comets. And that's just like you wanted it, Parker. A short gain to start off on that first down, second and seven. Decent run, get three yards there from Crowell. If they can keep this momentum right now, I, I can see them scoring pretty quickly here As in the second quarter. Ormsby in the shotgun. He has two receivers to his left, one to his right. And Crowell is still the back. He's going to bring Broussard in motion from that right side, and he's going to motion back out. As it, Crowell's going to take it up the middle, and that was a nice gain there. It gets about five, going to make it third and two. As here on the field, Ormsby in the shotgun. He has two receivers, one to his right, one to his left. Looking to get some things rolling is the Comets. Crowell in the backfield. As Crowell is going to go up the middle and he's going to get that first down as they are going to keep the drive rolling here, first and 10 for the Comets. 13-13 left to go here in the first quarter. Like I said, Fist, they're doing exactly what, I, what they should have been doing from the start. Getting those short gains, getting that short minimum yards, breaking down that clock. This is what they need to do for the rest of the game. As first down at about midfield, the 49-yard line inside Comet territory. Ormsby in the shotgun. Surveying the field now. He's going to hand it off to Sterling. This is going to be the first time we see Sterling. Sterling gets about five there. Going to make a second and five. Like I mentioned earlier, Fisk, in the first quarter, we'd probably see a little bit of change 
here and there with the running back position, especially with Jeremiah, Nuke, and Bartell all running the game just how they need to. They're all different types of running backs in the game of football. As Sterling is more of that power back inside trying territory now, second about five. A mishandle on the snap, and Ormsby's going to pick it up, and that's three mishandles. And maybe they, from this angle, it looked like they've been decent snaps, but 12 minutes left to go here in the first half. These snaps must be miscommunication from the center and quarterback. That's usually what we see happen in other games in college and in the NFL. As Ormsby's in the shotgun, he has two receivers to his right, two to his left. Sterling is the back. Going to take the snap. Broussard's going to come in motion. He's going to motion back out to the left. Surveying the field, he's going to try to get it up the field. He's going to get it to Jalen Broussard. Jalen Broussard stays on his feet, and he takes a couple thunder with him. And that is a huge gain there from Broussard after the mishandled snap there from Ormsby. Absolutely beautiful, especially like you said with that mishandle, it, it just puts them right back where they needed to be in that previous play. As 11-17 left to go here in the first, or in the first half, excuse me, Trine has a 7-0 lead, but the Comets are driving once again after that first down. Surveying the field is Ormsby. He's the lone guy in the shotgun right now. He has one receiver to his right, two to his left. And it's going to be a draw play for Ormsby. Ormsby's going to try to get to the outside. And that's actually David Coffey. David Coffey came in and he is more of the running, running quarterback. Excuse me, but there is a penalty flag on the play. As... The Comets fandom don't really like that call on the field. 10.47 left to go here, and it looks like it's going to be against the Comets, and that's going to push them back. As Coffee is still in at quarterback. Still in at quarterback is David Coffey. He has two receivers to his right, one to his left. Looks to be that penalty was on A.J. Billingsley with the holding call. As Coffey's in the shotgun, brings a man in motion. Surveying the field is Coffey. Coffey's going to take it himself up the middle once again, and he's going to get about three. Number 12, David Coffey on the going to be second and 17 here for the Comets. With their yardage or their yard on the field, I would not be surprised if the Comets were to try and heave one downfield right now. As Ormsby comes back in onto the field, which usually indicates that's back to their kind of normal offense here. No, no more, I don't know if you want to call when coffee's in like Wildcat, I guess is what like you would want like to call Maybe like a Taysom it. Hill roll, I would say. Yes as David Coffey does just about anything and everything on the field for the Comets. 9.50 left to go here in the first half. He's going to get it out to Jeremiah Sterling. Jeremiah Sterling gets it back out to about the original marker there. Going to be about second, or excuse me, third and nine. As Ormsby looking to get the play call from the sideline here. Comets going for it on third and nine. As it looks like they have about nine to go. Ormsby in the shotgun, two receivers to his left, one to his right. And thrown just a little bit behind him. And that's going to be fourth down. As they don't want to give the Thunder good field position, but you might see the Comets go for this one. Inside trying territory, and no, it looks like they are going to bring Brendan Sion out onto the field to punt it. On homecoming, still 7-0. Trine has the lead here with 9.05 left to go in the first half. Just trying to pin him back deep. 
is Brendan Sign. As a punt deep there from Sign, hits the turf at about the 10. And Logan Fee is going to throw it back out. And that's going to be a great play there from Logan Fee on the one yard line. Saves it from the end zone. An unbelievable play there from Logan Fee. And that is where Alex Price and the Trine Thunder will begin the drive at inside their own one yard line. I'm in absolute awe of what just happened there. A great play there from Logan Fee. And to get all the latest news, statistic, and athletic information. However, it looks like they are not going in that position where the Comets got the ball. Oh, as it looks like they're going to say that it was in the end zone, but a great effort there from Logan Fee. As it looks like his foot may have been on the line. But Price and company at the 20 yard line. Lone guy in the shotgun is Price. He has two receivers to his left, two to his right. Surveying the field is Price. Price is going to bring a man in motion, and it's going to be a draw up the middle, and Price is going to get about two, maybe three, going to make a second and seven. Still not terrible field position on both sides of the ball for the Comets after that play, but Trine is now on the 20-yard line, moving down the field. As they are at a, the 23 now with 8.25 left to go here in the first half. Surveying the field is Price. He's going to hand it off up the middle is Price. And Price is going to give it to Forney. And Forney's going to get about two more, makes it third and five. Number 32, Jordan Watson on the carry. As Trine's going to try to get a first down here, third and five to continue their drive, but just under eight minutes, 7.50 left to go here in the first half. As Price is in the shotgun, he has two receivers to his left, one to his right. Play action here. He gets it over the middle. And a nice tackle there from Isaiah Moon. And the, the pass was a short pass, quite short of the sticks here. Going to be fourth down. The Trine's going to have to punt it, its way, punt it away to the Comets once again. Second, or seven minutes left to go here in the first half. Fourth and four here for the Com or for the Thunder. As Akeem Benjamin is back deep to return here for the Comets. They are going to punt it deep and Benjamin's going to take the fair catch at about the 30 yard line. That was a nice punt there by Braden Moore. And with that, that is where Ormsby and the Comets will try to make put a drive together here before halftime, 6.40. Left to go here in the first half. All West College Athletic Department would like to thank its sponsors, Dean Trailways of Michigan, Buffalo Wild Wings, and Whitetail Farms Fresh Markets. And with that, Ormsby, excuse me, they are going to have coffee on the field once again as they're going to try to mix things up here towards the tail end of this first half. Six minutes left to go here in the second quarter. Surveying the field is Coffee? Coffee's in the shotgun, has two receivers to his left, one to his right, and Sterling's in the backfield. He's going to hand it off to Sterling. Sterling's going to try to go up the middle. He is going to get about two yards, going to make a second eight. As this is a very important drive here before halftime, as they are going to have to kick it back to the try, Thunder, as the second half begins. So they would like to put some points up on the board, whether that be a field goal or a touchdown, obviously more preferably a touchdown here with six minutes left to go here in the first half as they're going to try to make something happen as David Coffey is still in at quarterback. 
And Cortavion Barnett is back in as the back. He has two receivers to his right, one to his left. And there's going to be a penalty flag on the play. Like we said, Fisk, mental errors are what gonna, is what's going to determine this game. And that one is going to go against the Comets. And they are going to repeat the second down, but not after a five-yard penalty, making it about second and 13 here. As Ormsby in the shotgun, he's gonna give it to Barnett. Barnett's trying to get the edge, and he's going to be upended on the outside. It's gonna, he looks like he didn't gain anything there. Gonna make it third and about 13 here for the Comets. And with that, it's gonna be third and 13 here with just over five minutes, 519 left to go here in the first half. As Coffey's in the shotgun, he has Three receivers to his right, one to his left, and Barnett is the back. He's going to bring Seth Young in motion to the other side here. Back to pass is Coffey. Coffey's going to throw it up the middle to Jalen Broussard, and he's going to be short of the first down. It's going to be th fourth and about two. Comet should absolutely go for this right here. No point in giving him back the ball right now, especially when the Trine Thunder are going to get the ball after this half. As I... They are going to punt it, which in my opinion is the smart decision deep inside their own territory. You don't want to not get it and then give Thunder the great field position as you got to try to hold them as the defense has been your strong suit all season and here so far only giving up seven points. As Sign's going to kick it deep to Dean here. As Sign's going to kick it deep and it's going to be a great punt as Dean's going to try to catch it going back. As they're going to start to drive at about the 18-yard line. And they're going to have to drive almost the length of the field, about 80 yards, to get a touchdown here with just over four minutes left to go here in the first half. The office of alumni engagement would like to thank all the participants in this year's 2021 homecoming banner competition. As Comets and the Thunder take the field here. Just before halftime, about four minutes left to go. The homecoming Royals will be announced here at halftime. As Price is in the shotgun, he has two receivers to his left, one to his right. He's going to hand it off to hand it off up the middle to Kirby. Excuse me, and Kirby is going to get about a yard. Going to make it second and nine here for the Thunder, and now we are under four minutes left to go here in this first half. Three fifty left to go here in the first half. Trine has a seven zero lead. As points have definitely been hard to come by here so far in this one. As Price is in the shotgun, he has two receivers on both sides, left and right, and Kirby in the backfield. Price. Trying to set up a screen. He's going to get it to Price. A nice catch there from Price, but he is tackled out of bounds. And he's going to be short of the first down by about two yards. It's going to make it third and about two. Has that screen looked like it had some life? It had high potential if he didn't get pushed out of bounds. As, as a great play there by Andrew Campbell as well as Anthony Merriman to get over to the edge to limit the damage on that screen in it because it looked like they had completely got the Comet defense on their heels on that screen. But a great play there from those two gentlemen as there is 2.55 left to go here in the second quarter. Just before halftime, Trine gonna take a timeout. And with that Trine timeout, we're gonna take a quick 30 second break here on WCR 89 one the one Don't go anywhere for Comet football.
Hello, everyone, and welcome back. WOCR 89 won the one here at Cutler Event Center on this homecoming matchup between the Trine Thunder and the Olivet College Comets. As it's been a good one so far. 7 0. 2.45 left to go here in this first half. As just as we advertised pregame, it's been a very, very defensive heavy game. Just what you expected, especially with the Comets. I mean, Tamar, Tamar Hart is their head. They're like, it's like he's like their Aaron Donald, basically, of this team. Yes, that's not a bad comparison as Price is in the shotgun. He has two receivers to his left, one to his right, and Kirby's in the backfield. As they're going to go quarterback draw, Price is going to try to get the edge. But he is going to get a first down, and he is tackled there by Tamar Hart. I'd maybe say he's more of a Chase Young because of the dreads, you know? Yeah, he's and more he plays of a defensive end, exactly. so that would make more sense. But he is a very dominant force here for the Comets. 2.30 left to go here in this first half. 7-0, Tryon has the lead. Speaking about Tamar Hart, one defensive player of the year for the MIAA last, last year as Price in the shotgun. Gonna hand it off to Kirby up the middle and Kirby's gonna be stopped. Kirby's and two minutes here. left to go here in the first half. As the Comets playing good defense, trying to limit the damage here before halftime. As Price is in the shotgun, he has two receivers to his right. Surveying the field, he's gonna try to get the edge here. He's gonna send a man downfield and is gonna be thrown out of reach there and it's almost interception on the other side by John Thompson. And that's gonna be third and about five here for the Thunder. Price getting the field or getting the call from the sideline here. 134 left to go here in the first half. Still 7-0 trying. Kirby in the backfield. Price has two receivers to his left and one to his right. As, as there is a fumble, and the trine's gonna jump back on it. And it's gonna stay with the Thunder with 123 left to go here in the first half. Almost, that almost changed the entire momentum of the entire game as it has gone on today. A fumble can just ruin an offense. As Olivet almost made a great play there, but it is going to be fourth down, so they're gonna have about a minute and a half here to make something happen before halftime. A minute 25, and Olivet's going to take their first time out to try to preserve some time here. As the Thunder are going to try to... The Thunder are going to try to <laughs> to not kick it to Benjamin because he's very dangerous in the return game. Seems like the referees are trying to figure out their microphone situation, which is slowing down the game. As... Keem Benjamin is back deep to return here, as well as Braden Moore is going to be punting for Braden the Thunder. Keem Benjamin, back deep for the Comets. Set to punt here is trying. We may see good field position after the uh, wherever Akeem Benjamin ends up landing. As they are going to kick it to him, but they're gonna let it bounce, and that's gonna take a thunder bounce inside the 20 of the Comets at about the 18 yard line, and that is where the Comets will try to make something happen before the half ends here with just a minute 11 left to go here in the first half. That was a great special teams that play there by trying, trying to get them to figure, trying to figure out and reconfigure the uh, special teams on the Comets receiving side. As a minute 11, left to go here in the first half. As 
Coffee is still in at quarterback here. Coffee in the shotgun. And Sterling is in, in the backfield. He has two receivers to his left, does Coffee, and one to his right. He's going to bring Seth Young in motion. Coffee. He's going to throw it up the middle to Broussard, and that was a nice catch there from Broussard. It's going to keep the chains moving, but they're going to have to hurry. As they are... There's some t there's some clock there's some clocking issues. They're talking about a clock issue here, as the Olivet College Comets coaching staff is not very happy right now. And they're gonna have them probably put time back onto the clock. Start the clock on my whistle. As there's some frustration over on the coaching side. 103 is now on the clock. And just under a minute now, 59 seconds. As Coffee is going to take a sack there. And that's going to be 49 seconds left to go here. As they're going to try to hurry here. On the tackle as Crowell's gonna come in at tailback here with just about 30 seconds left to go here in the first half. So Coffee's in the shotgun. He's gonna try to throw it to Broussard there and that's gonna be incomplete with 23 seconds left to go here in the first half. Third down. As Coffee is going to have three receivers to his left once again. And Cortavion Barnett's going to come into the game at tailback. Surveying the field is Coffee. You might see Coffee just kind of hand this one off. Yep, Barnett's going to cut back inside, and he's going to get about two yards. That's going to make it fourth Barnett, and very long. For the comments, number 27. And so there is going 40. to. So be 16 seconds left on the clock here. Tyler Pollard on the tackle for Trine. And Trine might have taken a timeout time here. Try. Yep, Trine did time take out. a timeout to try to conserve themselves some clock to maybe heave one to the end zone. As they are, they do have Olivet pinned back deep here. Maybe get field, good field position on a punt. But Brendan Sign has been punting pretty well so far. He's going to try to flip the script here. As about the 20 yard line is where the Comets will be punting from. So Brendan Sines going to be punting for the Comets, and Dean is going to be back deep for the Thunder. Here with 16 seconds left to go. Fourth down, Brendan signed to punt for the Comets. Aaron Dean, back deep for try. As the snap is good and the punt is a good punt there from Sign. Told you Sign's been punting really well. And that's going to take a huge Comet bounce. Unbelievable punt. <laughs> that was. What a stellar punt. That, That's that, like a 70-yard punt right there, that, ladies and gentlemen. You could have kicked that boy over Mount Everest, if yeah. I'm being honest. Yeah, that was a good punt First there from Sine. As Trine. now Trine with just one second left to go after that great punt there from Sine. I'm that guessing they'll just take a Yeah, they'll just take a take a knee and take this oh one into yeah. halftime. OC Nation. Unless Trine figures out something, they they could pull something off. I'm going to say they're probably just going to take this one into halftime up with a 7-0 lead, and they are going to take the second half kickoff. And trying down the ball, that will be the end. And that is going to be the end of the first half. So with that, we're going to have some homecoming festivities here at halftime. 
as there is some stuff happening on the field. The band, they're gonna announce the homecoming Royals here as well. So with that, we're gonna take it to halftime here. Thank you guys for listening to the first half of Comet Football here on WOCR 89-101. We will be back for second half action at the end of this homecoming presentation.
Hello everyone and welcome back here on WOCR 89 one the one as we get set for second half of football here in this homecoming MIAA matchup between the Trine Thunder and the Olivet College Comets. As the Thunder are gonna receive this second half kickoff, what can we see in the second half from both squads, Parker? Uh, again, a little bit more of what they've done. Uh, inching their way down the field, using that for trying, using that pass game, that strong arm from, from Alex. And then on the Olivet Comet side, using that running game and just inching their way down the field. We can see a score, we can see the score go up really quickly here if they do what they need to do. As Brennan Sign is going to be kicking off here for the Comets. As after a low scoring affair here in the first half, trying only up 7-0. Kyron Pearson is back deep to return here for the Thunder. As we're getting set for second half action here, a fresh 15 is on the clock. 7-0 and Trine will receive this kickoff. And that kick is gonna go into the end zone and Trine will start this drive at the 20 yard line. As Price will bring his thunder back out onto the field. As in that first half, Try and had seven first downs, only 60 yards on the ground and 56 yards passing as both teams' offenses, offenses weren't that effective in the first half. Olivet just having 72 yards passing and 52 yards on the ground, which is not normal for them, I will say, for the Comets as both teams look to get something rolling here. As Price is in the shotgun. Clock two. As there is 15 minutes left on the clock here in this third quarter. As two receivers to his right, one to his left. As Price is in the shotgun. Price surveying the field now. Price is gonna take the snap here. Play action pass, he's gonna try to get it deep. And that is gonna be overthrown over the head of Pearson on that left side, Isaiah Moon on the coverage. And just 14.56 left here in this third quarter. Four seconds came off the clock there as that was a quick trigger play, gonna be second and 10. Could see a similar play going down right here with it being second and 10 right now. As Price in the shotgun, he has two receivers to his right and Kirby's in the backfield. Kirby's gonna go up the middle and he's gonna get maybe a yard. Kirby no, he's not even gonna, he's get back, he gets back to the line of scrimmage. It's gonna be third and 10 here for the Thunder. As this would be a huge stop right out the gate of this second half here for the Comets if they're able to get this one. Absolutely, what a momentum shift this would be for the Olivet Comets. Looking like all the, their, their sideline is all fired up right now to start this, sec, this second half of the game. As Price is in the shotgun, he has two receivers to his right, one to his left, and Kirby's in the backfield. Price, he's gonna uh, quarterback draw, and he looks like he is going to get the first down, a nice run there from Price up the middle. As linebackers were in coverage, and there was no spy there, so he was able to convert on that quarterback draw. 14-04 left to go here in the third quarter. Still 7-0, Tryon has the lead. It's Price, he's surveying the field. He's in the shotgun, Kirby's in the backfield with him. He has two receivers to his left, one to his right. He's gonna bring the man in motion, another draw play up the middle and the Comets snuffed that one out for about a two yard gain here for the Thunder and Price up the middle. It's gonna be second about eight. Second, 
second and eight here for the Thunder as the clock continues to click here. It's almost two minutes that came off the clock already so far as trying, trying to establish that run game early in this second half. As Price is in the shotgun, he has two receivers to his right, two to his left. Surveying the field now. He overthrows his intended receiver, and that's going to be third and about eight. Price is back. For eight that seven. defensive stop really was helpful for the Comets here in the early second half. And so with that, it's going to be third and about eight here with 12.55 left to go here in the third quarter. Another big third down here for the Comets to try to get the offense the ball back. Again, it would be a huge momentum shift in this game if the Comets were to stop them here. As Price in the shotguns. Back in the shotgun, and he is, is going to be an incomplete pass. Colby Williams in the coverage over the middle, and Kirby was the intended receiver. It's going to be fourth and about eight, and that's going to force the Thunder to punt. So with that, we are going to see Braden Moore and Akeem Benjamin back deep to return for the or for the Comets. Twelve fifty-two left to go here in this third quarter. As the Comets are going to try to get something rolling here on offense, awaiting the kick here from Moore is back deep Benjamin. And that's both teams, their punters have been kicking very well so far as Benjamin's gonna fair catch that at about the 14 yard line, 15 yard line, and that is where the Comets will begin their first drive of the second half. And with that, we will see who comes out into the field at, on court, at quarterback here. And it's going to be Evan Ormsby. We saw it. We saw a decent amount of David Coffey there at the end of the first half. So Ormsby's going to come back onto the field and try to lead the Comets down the field. I would say that's a smart play by the Olivet Comets coaching staff to put Ormsby, especially how far back in the field they are, they're going to use probably his gunslinger arm. As Ormsby's in the shotgun, he has two receivers to his left, one to his right, and Barnett is the back. Surveying the field there, and that one is almost picked off there up the middle, but it's going to be an incomplete pass. It's going to be second and ten here for the Comets. So with that, it's going to be second and ten, 12.39 left to go here in this, for, er, in this third quarter. As Ormsby's in the shotgun, Barnett is the back, and he has two receivers, one to, or two to his left and one to his right. As Ormsby, gonna take the snap, and Barnett's gonna try to go up the middle, and he almost breaks a tackle to get to the edge, but he's gonna get about a yard there, gonna make it third and nine here for the Comets. Getting the play call from the sideline is Ormsby. Trying to make something happen as the offense has been kind of stagnant these last couple of drives. So Ormsby in the shotgun, Barnett in the backfield. He has two receivers to his right, one to his left. He's going to bring Seth Young in motion. Ormsby's going to take the snap. He's going to try to throw it, and he's going to get it across the middle to Broussard. Broussard breaks a tackle, and that is a first down Comets and Moore. Gets it up to about the 40-yard line, and that was a good pitch and catch there from Ormsby to Broussard. What a beautiful play there by the Olivet Comets. Looks like Evan Ormsby had the perfect field vision, saw where everybody was at the time, and just made the play that was necessary. Ormsby in the shotgun now. He has two receivers to his right, one to his left, and Barnett is still the back. Looking over the field here. He's going to take the snap. He's going to give it to Barnett. Barnett's going to go up the middle. And ever since that first play of the game in that first half, they've really bottled up Barnett on the ground. 11-19 left to go here 
in this third quarter. 7-0, Trine has the lead. Is Ormsby getting the play call from the sideline. Has two receivers to his right, one to his left, and Barnett is the back. He's gonna take the snap here, his play action pass. And he's gonna get it to Seth Young. Seth Young on the left side, he's got some green, he gets the edge, and he's gonna be taken down at about the 30 yard line inside trying territory. A good pitch and catch there from Seth Young to Evan Ormsby. Seth Young had a George Kittle type catch, I'd say there. As Ormsby in the shotgun. And it looks like Sterling is the back now, or Crowell. He has two receivers to his right, one to his left. And it's going to be Crowell. Crowell is going to lower his shoulder pads there and get about five, maybe more. So he got, actually got seven or eight there. Nice Number run there. And it's going to be Ball second here. and about two here for the Comets as they are deep inside Thunder territory inside their red zone. Those small increments for the running backs are just so so crucial in, in just the game of football itself. Seven, down. As the comments came out in this second half with some energy here, for sure. This Ormsby's in the shotgun. The two receivers to his right, one to his left. He's gonna hand it off up the middle to Crowell. And Crowell is going to be stopped. And it looks like he tripped up on his own feet there taking the ball from Ormsby, it's gonna be third and three here. As Ormsby getting the play call from the sideline. Crowell is the back. Ormsby has one receiver to his left and two to his right. As Jalen Broussard has been the main target so far for Coffee as well as Ormsby so far as well as Seth Young. We might see them try to get it to them. And that is knocked down. And it, they're gonna call that a fumble there. It's gonna be picked up by the Thunder up the left side. And he's gonna take that back to the house. And it appears there is, they're going to call it a penalty. But it looked like it might have been an incomplete pass from up here but we will await the call. And still no incomplete pass call. There's a penalty marker on the play. Penalty marker on the play. It looked like there were, once again, all the way from up here, we are not the referee, so we are not on the field, but it looked like it was a forward throwing motion and it was an incomplete pass. But there's going to be a touchdown with an unsportsmanlike conduct. And they, that's gonna make it 13-0. Awaiting the extra point. And just like that, the momentum that the Comets had is back to zero. And the extra point Set to be kicked here from Hibbets. And the kick is up and the kick is good. And that's gonna make it 14 nothing here. As the scoop and score there from the Thunder. As the Comets will once again get the ball back here. As 8.43 left to go here in this third quarter. as Comets had something going, and there was a controversial call on the field, but it was went against the Comets and, and ended up being a touchdown there for the Thunder, as it was definitely 50-50 from up here, but it looked like it was an incomplete pass. But a scoop and score ends up being the outcome there for the Thunder, gonna make it 14-0, and the Comets have definitely gotta get something rolling on offense now, Parker. Absolutely, I mean, with that, 
with that play where that just happened recently with the uh, the the touchdown fumble touchdown as the refs called it. Um, the 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 Olivet Co College Comets need to find their 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 stepping right now. Deontay Higgins. As Hibbets will be back deep, and Akeem Benjamin and Deontay Higgins are back deep to return. As in, if you're if you're a Comet faithful, right now would be a good opportunity, an ideal opportunity for a huge return from Akeem Benjamin, as he is known for doing. As Akeem Benjamin is going to get it, and he sees some green. Up the middle, Akeem Benjamin up the right sideline. He's got one man to beat. Oh, and he's tripped up by, uh, he trips on his own feet. He had Hibbets to beat, and that was it. And just like that on cue but hey, is Akeem Benjamin. What a beautiful play there by Akeem Benjamin, putting it right back into their momentum, doing exactly what he needs to do, but get the other, get the Comets on the 25. As that is a huge play, huge play. And it, it's actually the 40, or excuse me, the 37 yard line, but that is a great return. About a 65 yard return there from Akeem Benjamin. And that is exactly what the doctor ordered for the Comets as they needed that. They really did need that. 8.32 left to go here in the third quarter as Akeem Benjamin provides the Comets with some life. Ormsby in the shotgun, two receivers to his left. He's going to hand it off to Crowell. Crowell up the middle, trying to take some thunder with him, and he's going to get about three yards. He's going to make it third, or excuse me, second and seven. As what a return Crowell there from Ball Benjamin. Here. Absolutely. If uh, on cue. I, it, hey, I yeah, called it, Parker. You did. I called it. I, I'm not going to lie, you did. And, I mean, hey, if he wouldn't have tripped up, that would have been a touchdown. Yeah, he had he had the kicker to beat. That was it. Gain of two, second down. But on cue, Benjamin makes the big play, and that's Akeem Benjamin for you. For those who haven't been able to watch or listen to Comet football games, Akeem Benjamin, big play guy. As Ormsby in the shotgun, play action pass. And he's going to get it up the middle to Higgins. Higgins makes the catch there. That's going to be a first down. And Comet's back to about the spot where they were before the fumble. I don't know if the people can hear right now, but you can hear the Olivet College fans just cheering right now, just excited for what's going on on the field. That's trying to get them fired up. Ormsby in the shotgun, two receivers to his right, one to his left. Surveying the field is Ormsby. Ormsby's gonna hand it off to Crowell. Crowell makes one cut up the middle, spins off. Great play there from Nuke Crowell. He made about four different guys miss there, spinned off a couple, and that's a touchdown, Comets. Definitely broke some ankles on that one. He definitely took them and is going to put them on his necklace later. And that is going to make it 14 to 6, awaiting the extra point. A nice play there from Crowell. Awaiting the extra point as Samuel Roos is out to kick the extra point. And just like that, Comets are on the board. Make it back to a one-score game. Fisk, I tell you right now, the college, Olivet College Comets are fired up after that. First, a great return. Secondly, an absolute beast of a running back just drilling through the thunder, just getting that touchdown and putting them now in a score of where they're down now, seven. And we'll see if that's the spark that the Comets needed to really get things back rolling here in this second half. Down. Down 14 to 6. I thought he made the extra point, but I'll see if they'll put 7 up on the board as he did make it. As he made the extra point. And it's going to be 14 to 7. 14 7, 7 oh, 09 here in the third quarter as they're going to have to kick back to Pearson, and that's Brennan's sign kicking. As that is going to be a short kick there, a short returnable kick there for Josh Davis. Josh Davis up the left sideline, and he's going to be pushed out of bounds, and that is where. 
Price and company will begin the drive. 7.02 left to go here in the third quarter. If you're trying after that huge couple of plays there from the Comets to cut it to one, how do you respond? Like I've talked all game, chew that clock down. That's all you gotta do. Chew that clock down, use that run game. Zane Kirby is, is, is their feature back. I mean, he's clearly done very well this entire game. Uh, I just use, use the running back, do a couple short passes, get a little slant in here and there, uh, then just march your way down the field. As Price is in the shotgun, he has two receivers to his right, one to his left, and Kirby in the backfield. He's gonna hand it off to Kirby. No, he's gonna keep it himself up the middle and he's gonna get a first down as that quarterback run has been very right, successful so far here in this game for the Thunder. Hey, and props to the O-line on both sides of the ball. Uh, they're just using their, using their work and just mo opening up holes for where both running backs and quarterbacks can get through the, get through the line. As Price is in the shotgun, he has two receivers to his right, one to his left, and Kirby's in the backfield. Surveying the field is Price. Price play action pass. He's gonna roll out and he is going to be pushed out of bounds there by Campbell. Campbell was chasing him Number down up that right sideline and he gets about three, gonna make it Number second and about five. five. Or excuse me, he gets five, gonna make second it second and five. five, apologize. 6.15 left to go here in the third quarter as this third quarter so far has went very quick as we've been going back and forth between these two squads in this MIAA matchup. As Price in the shotgun, he has two backs with him. And he has one receiver to his right, one to his left. Surveying the field is Price. Price is gonna hand it off up to Kirby with a lead blocker. As, and a Grigsby and Campbell make the play on the edge, but uh, makes first contact, and then Kirby able to slip off and get that first down, gonna move the chains for the Thunder. As I continue to mention these, but this would be a big stop here for the Comets, as every stop here on out would be a big one, obviously, but you just went and put some points up the board. Your offense has got some confidence now. Be a great opportunity to make a play on the defensive side of the ball. Price in the shotgun, he has two receivers, one to his right, one to his left. Surveying the field now. Price gonna take the snap, play action pass. He's gonna try to make something happen over the top and Pearson catches it on the edge. And he dusts the secondary there for a touchdown, a thunder. 20 to seven now. And just like that, back down two scores is the Comets here with 4.58 left to go here in the third quarter. Now they're gonna make the Comets respond very quickly again as Hibbets is on the field to kick the extra point. As Trine's offense comes, comes to play as well in this second half. As both teams seem to be fired up coming out of halftime as Tryon puts up two scores on the board here in the third quarter alone. And it's gonna be 21-7. And now, if you were to take a guess here, you would expect them not to kick it to Akeem Benjamin. He might switch a jersey or something, you know? Just <laughs> make, you know, make him fake it out, be like, ah, no, that's Akeem Benjamin over there. And the other guy's on the other side. I've, I've seen Higgins have some do some magic with the ball in his hands. So both those returners, I wouldn't kick it to either of them. I really wouldn't. Kick the, it like a lineman or something, you know? I'd kick it out the back of the end zone. That's where <laughs> I'd kick it. Don't give them any opportunity to return this because either guys back there deep for the Comets are dangerous in their own rights. If I were to compare their speed, I'd say they're like a Tyreek Hill and a Henry Ruggs. Yeah, they are very fast. Both speed demons in their own right. 4.58 left to go here in this third quarter. Comets down 21 to seven. Waiting the kick here from Hibbets. He 
Pivot's going to kick it deep here. And coach, I, I bet that the coach said something in the huddle about don't kick it to 13. But we might see them kick it to 13, and they sure do kick it to 13 as they didn't learn their lesson, I guess. As Benjamin's going to take it up the middle, and he, he doesn't get a whole lot there. But he gets it out to about the 21-yard line. And that was great Number coverage there. But regardless of the outcome there, you saw what he could do on that previous kickoff. I still don't quite understand why you would kick it to him. I know you made a great play on the, on the kick coverage, but kick it to somebody else. <laughs> hey, that's good for the Olivet College Comets. I mean... If they, they want the if ball they, in their playmaker's if, if hands, they don't right? want to learn, I mean, then they're going to learn the consequences of it. I mean, it's clear. As Ormsby's in the shotgun, has two receivers to his right, one to his left. 4.50 left to go here on in the third quarter. Ormsby in the shotgun. Crowell in the backfield. Crowell's got it up the edge, and he's going to try to get the edge. He does get the edge. He's not going to be quite... Get quite a first down, but he's got about seven. Going to make it second and three here. Big Crowell. 4.43 left to go here in the third quarter. It's like I said, this third quarter feel like feels like it, it went by so fast. As Ormsby's back in the shotgun, has two receivers to his right, one to his left. Looking over the field now is Ormsby. Ormsby's going to take it. He's a play action pass. He's going to throw it, and he's going to get it to Pagano. That's Pagano's first catch of the day. And he's going to get it up to midfield there at about the 49 yard line inside Trine territory. They're trying to score quick and trying to score fast in this, this quarter right now with four minutes and 16, 15 seconds left on the clock. As They're first, just moving down the field right now. As first and 10 from midfield, Ormsby in the shotgun, two receivers to his right, one to his left. And Barnett see, looks to be back in the game as Broussard's going to motion back left. And they're going to give it to Barnett. Barnett up the left side. And he's going to get about six, six, seven, or eight there. He's going to end up getting eight yards. Number After the official seven, marker, going to make it second and two. Hey, what a way to use use a momentum shift. I mean, just moving those chains constantly down the field. I mean, I got to give props to the Comets right now just for not giving up. As the Comet offense seems to have some more confidence here so far. They saw one punch in. Now, so far here in this third quarter, they've been playing very well. As Ormsby's in the shotgun, got two receivers to his right, one to his left. Trying up 21-7 here with 3.20 left to go. They're going to hand it up the middle, and he's going to get a no gain up the middle is Barnett. It's going to be third and about three. As Crowell's going to check back into the game here for the Comets. As the clock continues to tick, under three minutes now, trying up 21-7. Olivet trying to make something happen here on offense in this late in this third quarter. Third and about three. Crowell checks into the game as the tailback here. He's got two receivers to his right, one to his left. They're going to hand it up to Crowell. Crowell is going to take a couple people with him, and he's going to get a first down. Looks like on first contact he was going to be short. And he just dragged a couple defenders with him, and that's going to be a first down comments. Crowell must have done some squats lately to get those that like leg power. He kept the legs moving, that's for sure. It's going to move the chains at about the 40-yard line now. 2.14 left to go here in this third quarter. Still down two scores as Jeremiah Sterling checks into the game at tailback. Ormsby has two receivers to his right, one to his left. Surveying the field now is Ormsby. Ormsby is going to take the snap here. He's going to hand it off to Sterling. Sterling showing off some grinding of his own, trying to grind some yards out on the ground. And gets about five there. And it's going to be about second and a long five here 
for the Comets. 140 left to go here in the third quarter. As Ormsby's in the shotgun, once again, he has two receivers to his right, one to his left. Second and six. Ormsby's got it, now he's gonna hand it off to Sterling. Sterling, and he is gonna be just short of that first down, gonna make it about third and one. Comets doing what they need to do, inching their way down the field. It's, it's just a good play. And with that, third and one here. Third down and a long one. 55 seconds left to go here in the third quarter. Comets trying to put their second score up on the board. At about the 31 yard line. Ormsby's gonna take the snap. He's gonna give it to Sterling up the middle. And Sterling Looks like, looks like they might give him the first down. It's gonna be close. And awaiting the official spot from the officials down on the field. And it's gonna be third. And they are gonna give him the first down, it looks like. Now it's a good run there from Sterling just to get that tough yard. It's gonna make it first down here with 27 seconds left to go here in the third quarter. As the play clock and the game clock are separated by about three seconds, Comets might just take this one into the fourth quarter. Has nine seconds left, Ormsby in the shotgun. Gonna bring men in motion. He's gonna take the snap and they're gonna run one more run play. Sterling tries, to, or excuse me, that's Crowell, tries to get the edge. And that's gonna be the end of the third quarter. A fresh 15 is gonna come out onto the clock. Comets are down two scores, but they're driving here, down 21 to seven. And with that, we're gonna take a quick 30 second break here on WOCR 89 one the one Don't go anywhere for Comet football. Hello everyone and welcome back here on WLCR 89 one the one Fresh 15 on the clock here as this is the final quarter of action in this homecoming game between the Olivet College Comets and the Trine Thunder. As the Olivet Comets are trying to make something happen here as they're driving down the field. As they, they almost have to put points up on the board down two scores. As Thunder, uh, their offense looked pretty good on the previous drive. As fourth quarter getting set. As both teams still on the sideline here. As if you're Olivet, what do you gotta do here, Parker? Olivet, I mean, hey, what they're doing is honestly great. Just inch, like, I mentioned this one and one time, another time again. Inching your way down the field is a great way to get momentum. As trying to conserve momentum and keep it in their favor is the comments of they've done a great job of kind of driving down the field, using quite a bit of clock in that third quarter. Gets them inside the 30 yard line, inside trying territory. Ormsby in the shotgun, has two receivers to his right, one to his left, and Crowell in the backfield. Play action pass, he's gonna get it to Higgins. Higgins is gonna be out of bounds, but it's gonna be a first down Comets. Just five seconds into the fourth quarter, inside the red zone is the Comets. And with that, Evan Ormsby. Commanding his troops here in the shotgun. 
Crowell to his left in the backfield. Has two receivers to the left, one to the right. Looking to get something going now. Takes the snap here. He's going to hand it up the middle to Crowell. Crowell makes one jump cut. He's going to try to get the edge. He does get the edge. And that's going to be a touchdown. Comets cuts it to one score here. 7 to 13 to 21, excuse me, awaiting the extra point. 14 27 left to go here in this ballgame. Waiting the extra point from Roos. As this has been an exciting half so far as both teams have put two scores up on the board. And once again, pressure goes to that Comet defense which has been their strength so far this season to get a stop here and get the ball back to the Comet offense. Roos set to kick here for the Comets. And the kick is up and the kick is good there from Roos. It's gonna make a 21-14 try and still leads by a score. This. How you doing over there, Parker? Doing all right, I mean, hey, I'm a little hyped up right now. I didn't wanna, I didn't wanna over scream what you were saying. It, it's, uh, it's. There is 14-27 left to go here in the fourth yep. quarter. As the defense almost has to make a big play here. As Trine, you've been alluding to it a lot here pre-game and during the game. Trine is probably going to try to use a lot of the clock and go put another score down on the board for themselves. If you're the Comets, what do you got to do to try to make sure you keep a lot of time left for your offense to go make a play? Lately what I've noticed with Trine is that they're using their quarterback to run. Uh, really what needs to happen is that D-line needs to make sure holes don't open. That's really what it boils down to. As do you leave a spy? You have uh, leave oh, absolutely. Leave a spy on one of the linebackers, maybe the mic. Um, leave a spy. Make sure Alex won't be able to maneuver. And it might be going back to the Comet offense real quick as up the sideline is the Trine Thunder. And just like that, back to a two-score deficit is the Trine Thunder. 27-14 now, waiting the extra point. And the Comet defense isn't even going to get on the field. It's going to go right back to the Comet offense. After that quick score, just 12 seconds later, Trine puts another score on the board. Fisk, I'll say it once and I'll say it again. When we mentioned mistakes will cost you the game, that is one of them. As just a little bit of a broken coverage on that kick return, or on that kick coverage, excuse me. Awaiting the extra point. It's 27-14, awaiting this extra point. Looking to make it a two score game. A, two, a full 14, two points, two score game, Parker. A little bit of a tongue twister, huh? Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> As Gonna make it 28 to 14 here on homecoming. As Trine's trying to play spoil on this homecoming weekend here for the Comets. Down two scores now. And once again, they're gonna try to make some plays on offense. Still a lot of time left. Absolutely. The only fish. good thing that came out about of about that kickoff is they only took 12 seconds off the clock. Yeah, I mean. Obviously, you don't want that to happen. Yeah, that still leaves a ton of time for the Comets to do something here. They, I mean, they're only down two scores right now. Um, hey, just just do what you need to do. Get that ball back. and Some big plays. Absolutely. Interception, a sack, a fumble. Hey. Just, well, they're going to be on offense, on offense here. I, I now realize. But, hey, deep. Hey. I don't know, go for it and do like a 100-yard pass? I don't know. As I don't think they will be doing a 100-yard pass, nah, that, but I would, expect, a stretch, I but would yeah. expect them to be more pass-oriented throughout the rest of this fourth quarter. Absolutely. Especially at least until they cut it to a score. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, hey, that run game is working, but... But you also don't want to get completely away from yourself. And, yeah. And you don't want to get it completely away from the run. 
as your tailbacks have been very big playmakers here in this second half. Maybe set them up with some screens, especially if you want to keep them involved in the game. Yeah, there's. I, I know Coach Moose has a, li a huge play, but he needs. I, there, there's, there's a lot of other plays I guarantee he hasn't used yet. As they took my advice this time and they kicked it out to the back of the end zone. And as there's 14-15 left to go here in this second half. As there's 14-15 left to go here in the fourth quarter, down two scores is the Comets. All right, folks. The $375 Michael Kors purse goes to Mike Bruce from Charlotte, Michigan. And with that, Ormsby and company come back out onto the field, need to make something happen. Ormsby in the shotgun. Crowell is the back as he has played very well so far, having two scores in this second half alone. He has two receivers to his left and one to his right does Ormsby. Ormsby is going to take the snap here. Play action pass. And he's going to try to get it to Broussard up the middle. And a little bit too far out in front, and it is almost picked off there by Trine. That would have been a beautiful interception there by Trine. Ke Keyshawn Amison. If he would have caught that, that would have probably been like the main highlight of the game. Absolutely, he laid it out for that one and he didn't quite catch it. That would have been a great play. That's just a good play to knock it down there as Broussard had the end zone in sight if he catches that one. And Ormsby in the shotgun has two receivers to his left, one to his right. And Crowell's in the backfield. They're going to give it to Crowell. Crowell's going to make one cut and get back up the middle and he's going to get about three yards. going to make it third and seven. And this is a big third down here for the Comets. You do not want to give the ball back to the Thunder. 13.48, the time continues to, to tick here in this fourth quarter, down two scores. 28-14, Trine leads. Ormsby in the shotgun, has three receivers to his left. That looks like a Barnett in the backfield. He's going to take a shot. And it mistimes his jump there. And it looked like there was a little bit of a late hit there. As, as the catch was almost uncatchable, I would say. And yet, they still took a shot on Broussard over there on the left side. As the Olivet coaching staff, as well as the fans, wanted a call there. And I think they had an argument. But Brennan Sign is going to punt here. A little disappointing of a drive there by the Olivet Comets. Uh, we expect, they expected more and hopeful, not. Nah. As they tried to make a big play happen, as Sign's kick is short, gets it out to about the 40. Three yard line, that is where Trine will set back up on offense. As this is a, I know I'm beating a dead horse here, but this is a big stop if, if the Comets are able to get one. Absolutely, Fisk. I mean, with the score of 28 to 14, they, they, they need, need something. They, need, they, they really need it. This is, this is either a game winner or a game loser right here. As going down three scores here with 13 minutes left to go, or less than 13 minutes to go, would not be ideal for the Comets, but Price is in the shotgun, has two receivers to his left, one to his right. Again, mental errors are a huge part of this game of football. As Price is going to take it up the middle, as he has been the focus of the rush game so far in this second half for Price, the, ball carrier. the Thunder. And there, it looks like they stripped it, but they're going to call him down on moment, a stop to momentum Game there. Five, by number 93, Rogers. And with that, it's going to be second and five here second for the five. Thunder. As time continues to tick off the clock. 
Price in the shotgun, has two receivers to his left, one to his right. Price surveying the field here. As he's play action pass, he gets it over to his intended receiver. Pass is complete. Gutting, and that is going to be third and about three. As they got him to third down here. As third and three, that's a very manageable third down situation. You can run or pass here. And so the Comets are, are gonna try to make a make something happen. As they might di dial up some pressure, you think, maybe, Parker? Absolutely, I mean, this third down song kind of brings a little bit of fear in the opponent's eyes. As Price is in the shotgun. Going to take it himself up the middle, and he's going to get a first down. That's going to move the chains rolling for the Thunder. 11.37 left to go here in the fourth quarter. And that is a first down from about the 43-yard line. On the tackle, first down, trying. Price in the shotgun. Has one receiver to his left, one to his right, and two backs in the backfield. They like to run a little sweep play out of this formation with Kirby as the back. They're going to probably run right here. And uh, on cue, just like that, and Kirby stays in bounds. Unbelievable play there from Kirby. That's a touchdown trying. Makes it 34 to 14. Here, that was unbelievable balance there on the edge to stay in bounds. Must have worked out his ankles a little bit to keep that stability. Makes it 34 to 14, awaiting the extra point with 11 minutes to go. Trine really is dominant right now with that run game. Zane Kirby just seems to not have any split, split time with any other backs on the team. As he has been the workhorse As Hibbets set to kick the extra point. And the Comets now down three scores. And the extra point is the good. offense, it is now, the ball is now in their court. This is a, they have to score on this one. I don't like to say they have to score because I've seen some crazy things in football. But only 11 minutes left to go here in the fourth quarter. They need to put a touchdown up on the board on this possession right here. It's a do it now or kind of go home situation, if you would say that, Fisk. As Comets need some life here. As Trine is kind of, I hate to say this, but it looks like they took the life out of the Comet sideline, which is abnormal because it takes a lot for the Comet sideline to go silent and right now. There's not a whole lot of energy over there. Yeah, I know some of those guys, and I know how, how hype they can get for the game of football, and they just feel defeated, and that's what you can't do right now. You got it. You got to get that energy up. You got to bring your brothers up and just win this game. As that is the Olivet College Comet football motto is win. So 11.03 left to go here. Down three scores, 35-14. And now is the time where they don't want to kick it to either guy, as Hibbets is going to probably attempt to kick this one out the back of the end zone. And he's not going to. It's going to be Higgins this time. Higgins has got it. He's going to go up the left side, and he's going to go up the middle to about the 22-23 yard line. And that is where they will begin their drive here with 10.56 left to go here in the fourth quarter. This is an absolute, absolute necessary scoring drive for the Comets, as you said earlier, Fisk. As you will probably see a lot resting on the right arm of Evan Ormsby on this drive. Potentially David Coffey might mix it in a little bit. But there is a penalty flag on the play. Awaiting the call here. Dead ball after the play. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Number 87. As it is 
uh, as it is going to go against Trine with an unsportsmanlike conduct. And that's going to move him forward. As And with that, it's going to be a first down Comets, and that's going to move them and get them in better field position here. But it is going to be Evan Ormsby, and you might see a lot of that right arm. As Crowell is the back, he has two receivers to his left, one to his right. As Ormsby. Try to make something happen. Awaiting the official spot here. As we are set to roll now here with 10.56 left to go in the fourth quarter. Ormsby in the shotgun. Once again, two receivers to his left, one to his right. as we are set to roll. As Crowell is the back. Ormsby's gonna take the snap here. Surveying the field. He's gonna take it himself up the middle and he's gonna be upended, but not after about a three, four Number yard six. gain. Gonna make his second Ormsby's six here for the Comets. And with that, 10.38 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Ormsby in the shotgun. Sorry to interrupt you, Parker. What were you going to say? I was saying, about to say, Ormsby looked like he had a little bit of a wheels on him up there, getting a short gain. As Pagano's got it, and he is going to get the first down, and that's going to keep the chains rolling here. As we might see Olivet go a little bit quick trigger. And that's what they need. I mean, realistically, if they keep that, I mean, I've said this a lot, but keeping that clock down, but if they have enough time on the clock to, one, stop trying the trying thunder on the offensive side, but also get another score, they can be up, they can be back where they want to be. As Ormsby is going to throw it deep here, and it's going to be over the head of Pagano, and that's going to make it second and ten. Ormsby's pass. It's going to make it second and 10, 9.47 left to go here in this fourth quarter on homecoming here. Ormsby getting the play call from the sideline. He's in the shotgun, has two receivers, one to his, or two to his right, one to his left. And Crowell is at the back. He's going to try to throw it to the out. And that is going to be caught there from Sequeria's ball. And he's going to be catch it on his knee. So that's going to make it third and about four. An absolute necessary conversion for the Comets here on third down. They need to move these chains or... This game is pretty much over for them. Not 9.20 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Ormsby in the shotgun. They're going to hand it off up the middle to Crowell. And Crowell doesn't get anything there. Uh, but this is four down territory here for the Comets. And nine minutes are on the clock left. As this is the biggest play of the game so far for the Comets. Ormsby is going to be in the shotgun, has two receivers to his left, one to his right. This is an obvious passing down unless you plan, you think you can get the first down with a halfback draw or a quarterback draw, but I'm thinking it's going to be a pass here. And they're going to get it to Seth Young. Seth Young's going to get the first down. That's a huge play. Able to keep the drive rolling. 8.33 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Fisk, what a stellar drive this is. They just cannot make a mental mistake here or this this will just ruin their chances. As they are almost in, not almost, in my opinion, they're in the territory where they need to score onside kick already. As this drive has taken quite a bit of time, a low snap. 
He's going to throw it up the middle, and it's going to be picked off there as the, it was intended for Deontay Higgins, but eight minutes left to go here in the fourth quarter, and that's an interception there from Evan Ormsby, and that's going to give the ball back to Price and Company. And now this is where they'll beat beat the clock here, try to beat the clock down a little bit with the run game. Chew down the clock, use yep. that run game, get them down the field. It's not necessary to even make it down the field now. You're up three scores, you just gotta get some first downs and obviously a score would be cherry on, the, on top of the Sunday, but as Price is in the shotgun, he's gonna hand it off over there to Kirby and Kirby's going to get about three, maybe four yards. Going to make his second about seven. And on with that, makes it second and seven. 7.50 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Tackles made by number 92. As Price is in the shotgun, this is the two-back set where they like to run that sweep right, which has been very successful so far. That's this is actually the play that they scored that last touchdown did Zane Kirby. Trine up 35-14. They're going to give it to Kirby. Kirby's going to pop it to the outside, and he's going to be knocked out of bounds there by Merriman. But it's going to be a first down Trine here with 7-17 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Kirby, the ball carrier. Tackle made by number three. And with that, and chains continue to move at about the 25-yard line. 24-yard line is where Trine will continue this drive. 7.07 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Seven minutes on the clock now. Price in the shotgun. He's going to bring Vargo in motion. He's got two back set. They're going to hand it off once again to Kirby, but Kirby is stopped on that one for about a one-yard gain. Going to make a second and nine. 6.40 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Made by number 50. As the clock continues to tick here, 6.33. Second, down. second and nine here for the Trine Thunder. As Price is in the shotgun, Kirby in the backfield, he's going to bring Gutting in motion. He has two receivers to his left, one to his right. Kirby's going to, or they're going to fake it to Kirby, and Price is going to go up the middle. And Price has been very successful running up the middle so far, Parker. Absolutely. I mean, with what they were trying to do right now, they that's, that's the goal. They just want to chew down the clock, not go out of bounds, not stop the clock. You want to keep on going through the middle, keep on chewing down that clock to get to conceal is a better word. As they are injury. looking to try to dominate the time of possession here in this fourth quarter. Third down, one to go. As Trine has scored relatively quickly so far. Only having about 18 minutes of time of possession, but Kirby Makes two guys miss. He gets the edge on that left side, and he is going to be pushed out of bounds, but not after a huge gain is Zane Kirby. And just like that, switch field positions did Zane Kirby with 518 left to go here in the fourth quarter. As the clock continues to run, five minutes now. As Price is getting the play call from the sideline. And we are under five minutes to go here in this fourth quarter. Price in the shotgun. He's going to bring Vargo in motion. Got two receivers, one to his left, one to his right. They're going to hand it off up the middle after about after a good gain of about six. They're going to make it third and two. Number 32. As Jordan Watson on the carry. As they are giving Kirby some rest as he has been the workhorse so far as Kirby getting 
some action here late in this one with 4.30 left to go here in this fourth quarter. Off three scores, trying, really exerting their will here in this second half. As Trine gets it to, as Price gets it to Watson of Trine, there you go. And then up the middle, and that's gonna be a first down, that's gonna keep the chains rolling. Number 32, Watson. And that's gonna be 3.55 left on the clock. The clock continues to run here. 35-14 is the score. As on this homecoming game for the Comets, has been 35. It's been a dominant performance here from Trine. Really trying to spoil homecoming here today. Seems like, I mean, that's everybody's goal when they go away for a homecoming game, isn't you're it? Not, yeah, you're not wrong. As Price in the shotgun, he's gonna hand it off to Watson up the middle. Watson's get some space off the left side. And he's gonna be pushed out of bounds there. And that is gonna Watson be, take carry. even more time off the clock here. And he's gonna be just short of a first down, second and one. And they're gonna start the clock once again here as we are approaching three minutes here in this one. And so that, so that's 3.04 here and they're actually gonna give him the first down there. Four here in the fourth quarter, trying up 35 to seven inside the red zone of the Comets once again. And the Comets use a timeout here. Stop the clock. As Trine has really been dominant so far here, Parker. Absolutely, that run game is just killing them right on this last three minutes of the game. And with just over three minutes, Olivet used their first time out here of the second half. They have two left now. Down three scores. As Price brings the Thunder back out onto the field, he's in the shotgun, Watson in at tailback. Looks like we'll be seeing a lot of Watson here in these last three minutes here as Price has two receivers, one to his right, one to his left. Olivet. And Olivet's gonna use another timeout here. And with that, it's gonna, we're gonna take a quick 30 second break here on WLCR 89-101. Don't go anywhere as we finish up this game here on Homecoming. And welcome back as both teams come back out onto the field here with just over three minutes left to go here in the fourth quarter in this homecoming matchup between the Tryon Thunder and the Olivet College Comets. As Trine, very dominant here in the second half. They just seven points there in that first half, able to put up 28 points here in the second half on that stellar Comet defense. As they, I think they kind of just grinded it out. As Watson's gonna get it up the middle and he's gonna get nothing there. He's gonna actually lose a yard. Gonna make it second and 11 here for the Thunder with under three minutes left to go now. Watson's a ball carrier. And now Olivet's gonna use their three. final timeout. Jalen Rogers on the tackle. And so now Olivet will have zero timeouts here as they try to make some magic happen here with under three minutes left to go. Well, 
if you are the comments, you are definitely hopeful for a mistake on the th trying Thunder's part. Absolutely, maybe a strip here. And with that, both teams come back on, onto the field here. As things get set to roll here with under three minutes, 2.52 to be exact here. And it is second and about 11 yards here for the Thunder. The Thunder up 35 to 14. As things get set to go here. Price in the shotgun, two receivers to his right, one to his left. He's going to take it himself up the middle. He's going to make a guy miss, and he's going to get up to about the seven-yard line. Price on the carry. And that's going to make it third and about four. Rogers and Wilkins on the tackle. And that's going to be and, uh, under 2.30 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Trine has really milked the clock here in this fourth quarter. Starting this drive with about eight minutes left to go and under two minutes about to be here with 2.10 left to go. Price in the shotgun. He's going to hand it off up to Watson up the middle. Watson still moving his feet and he's going to be short of the end zone and short of the first down. It's going to be fourth and about one. Watson the ball carrier. As 149 left to go here in this one. Trine's got about two yards to gain for the first down. Inside the Olivet five. As they really are just trying to grind the clock out now. They're going to take as long as they want before snapping this one. As the play clock continues to wind down. They might actually use a timeout here. As they are going to use the timeout here, they just wanted the play clock to start and use as much time as they can. And with that, 117 left to go here in this ball game. As Trine has looked pretty good in the second half, Parker. Absolutely. And They're just so dominant right now, and it's 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 just giving the Comets just such a hard time. And the Comets looked pretty good early in the second half. They put two Two scores up on the board. Looks like their offense had some confidence. I'd and almost just say they a, lost. A, a couple of mishaps lead to try and taking advantage. With 117 left to go here, it is.